Uh, let's talk about Brad's Status, which is the new film written and directed by Mike White, who many years ago uh, wrote School of Rock for Richard Linklater. And since then, he's had writing credits all over the place, including, funnily enough, Pitch Perfect 3, which we discussed earlier. And he also uh, is credited with having partly written the Emoji movie. But I believe in that situation, we can't apportion too much blame because I think he was on it for three weeks or something, just basically trying to restructure it into some kind of, and you know, obviously not managing to do so, trying to restructure it in some sensible order. Uh, but he wrote and directed this script. It uh, stars uh, Ben Stiller as a successful married father in his late 40s, who's a former journalist and has since gone on to found a non-profit organisation that um, he is the, the, the sole kind of em employee of, as well as the founder, that's to do with uniting people with charitable donations. And it's all incredibly worthy. He's very stably married. He has a teenage son called Troy, who's uh, played by Austin Abrams, who is uh, in the middle of applying for college and has had some prestigious offers from uh, various uh, you know, Ivy League institutions. And yet he has a nagging sense that he's not doing as well as he should be. And the main reason for this is his own college age friends are obscenely successful and very overtly successful. One of them played by Luke Wilson is a hedge fund manager and one played by Michael Sheen is this suave political pundit who has written this best-selling, uh, very insightful political book and he's always on television chewing over the big issues of the day. And this has kindled this sense of dissatisfaction in Brad's life. Now, his anxiety comes to a head while he's touring around the various universities with Troy on this father-son road trip uh, to his son's frequent semi-public mortification. And he basically wishes he was a few rungs higher up the ladder so that he could spend bigger, make things move more smoothly, perhaps grease some palms, you know, shake some hands, make his son's passage into higher education a little bit more smooth than it's going to be. And here's uh, one such uh, embarrassing encounter that they have along the way in this clip. Oh, good news. There are two seats available in business. Oh. Can I see your tickets, please? Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I was hoping to put it on my miles. I got a bunch of miles, I think. Unfortunately, no, not with this flight, you can't. So, cost to upgrade to business would be $821 per ticket. So the total would be $1,642. $1,600? That's for a domestic flight? Yes, $1,642. Would you like to go ahead and purchase the tickets? I am going to go for it. Go for it. I'm going to put it on my Amex. Actually, sorry. Put it on my MasterCard. Thanks. I'm going to put it on the Amex. So your tolerance for this film is in direct proportion to your tolerance for Brad's nonsense. And it is nonsense. You know, this guy is doing perfectly well in life. And it's very, very clear from about two minutes into the film that the only lesson that he can have possibly learned by the end of it is shut up, stop complaining. The grass is completely green enough for you or anyone else. So just get on with your life, you know, enjoy what you've got. The film, you can imagine a version of this film where basically everyone was looking askance at Brad, thinking that what he was doing, this kind of bizarre midlife crisis he was going through, is completely absurd. But that's not the approach that Mike White takes. He actually seems to indulge Brad's character to quite a strange degree. And, and he does that by, uh, there's, for example, there's a very flowery, um, I would say overwritten first person uh, narration by Ben Stiller's character where he talks, you know, very intensely about all these incredible, you know, difficulties he's going through in his life. And this is kind of playing over the top of him bumbling around with his son. And there's dream sequences where he's imagining himself frolicking on the beach with, you know, two of his son's teenage friends, completely inappropriate kind of fantasies that he's having about this other life that he could have led if he'd made separate decisions. And there are, uh, there's a supporting character played by a, a, a new actress called uh, Shazi Raja, who I've not seen anything, who plays um, one of the students that they meet during a tour at Harvard. And she very patiently and very sympathetically sits down with Brad to listen to, you know, how he feels his life has gone wrong and sort of nod and reassure him that everything's going well. And what it made me feel is that the film doesn't really understand who its main character actually is. And if you compare it to Ben Stiller's recent work with Noah Baumbach, so in films like Greenberg and While We're Young and The Mayor of Its Stories, particularly The Mayor of Its Stories, which came out last year and is, is just a terrific, terrific piece of acting from Ben Stiller specifically and, and a great Baumbach film in general, Stiller plays deeply flawed characters in those films. And the films express limited sympathy for those characters and they get you to feel sympathy for them. 
but they still make no bones about sort of exposing their foibles and flaws and, uh, for, and you know, making you aware of just how absurd they are. So even if the character doesn't really understand who they are, you're certain that the film understands who they are and you come out certain that you understand who they are. This film, the details just don't add up. And it's a pity because Ben Stiller is actually really good in this and moment to moment, scene to scene, you can see he's putting a lot of thought into it. He has, as you know, as we know from that earlier work with Ben Back, he has a really assured tragicomic touch when it comes to this stuff. He can make you uh, feel sorry, but also laugh at someone and in, 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 laugh at a character in, in, the same, uh, in the same sentence, you know, in the same line. So he's doing that scene by scene, but together, this kind of sensible character doesn't really cohere. You have, uh, he's a son who is going off to study music um, at Harvard or whatever, Tufts, whatever university he decides to go for in the end. And I just don't believe that Ben Stiller's character, who is as status conscious as he is, would be happy with a son going to study music because obviously it's not this kind of super lucrative job unless you you know get in right at the very very top of this industry it's something you follow your heart to do surely he'd be persuading him to go into you know law or dentistry or something that's going to be a, a more surefire, surefire earner but the film just doesn't seem to notice that this is this weird inconsistency and so it's kind of seeded throughout it that it, you just don't sense that it really knows what it's doing i, I admire ben Stiller's commitment to the part i just wish he had something more solid and more memorable to commit to but who do you think this is aimed at I think it's aimed at men who are in their 40s who are experiencing some kind of midlife crisis that life hasn't worked out as well. It's basically aimed at Brad. It's the kind of film that Brad would go and see and go, do you know what? I am actually doing okay, but I don't, you know, this kind of backslapping for a character who is so objectionable in the first place, I just can't get on board with.